Hello and welcome to another edition of Growth Points. Today we will be taking a look at Exodus chapter 14 verses 10 through 31. Verses 10 through 12 say this, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. We see in these verses that they were trapped against the sea. The Israelites faced the Egyptian army sweeping in for the kill. The Israelites thought that they were doomed after watching God's powerful hand deliver them from Egypt. Their only response was fear, whining, and despair. Where was their trust in God? Israel had to learn from repeated experience that God was able to provide for them. God preserved these examples in the Bible so that we can learn to trust Him the first time. As you and I focus on God's faithfulness in the past, we can face crisis, we can face times of uncertainty with confidence rather than with fear and complaining. This is the first instance of grumbling and complaining by the Israelites. But grumbling would become a major problem for the people on this journey. And their lack of faith in God is startling. Yet how often do we find ourselves doing the same thing? Complaining about inconveniences or complaining over discomforts. The Israelites were about to learn some tough lessons. Had they trusted God, they would have been spared much grief. Verses 13 and 14. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring it to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. We see that the people were hostile and they were despairing. But Moses encouraged them to watch the wonderful way that the Lord would rescue them. You see, Moses had a positive outlook. He had a positive attitude. When it looked as if they were trapped, Moses called upon God to intervene. Now you and I may not be chased by a literal army, but we still may feel trapped. And instead of giving in to despair, we should adopt Moses' attitude to stand still and watch the Lord rescue us. Do you have a positive attitude? Or do you have a positive outlook? Trusting in the fact that the Lord is able to rescue you. Verse number 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. The Lord told Moses to stop praying and to get moving. Now prayer must have a vital place in our lives. But there is also a place for you and I to take action. 
Sometimes we do not know what to do. And we pray for more guidance as an excuse to postpone doing it. But when you and I hear from God and we know what we are supposed to do, then we must take action and move forward. Verses 16 through 22. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of the cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. And throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back the sea, drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. You see, there was no apparent way of escape, but the Lord opened up a dry path through the sea. And there are times that you and I find ourselves caught up in a problem or a situation and there seems to be no way out. But we should not panic because God can make a way where there seems to be no way. Now some of the scholars believe that the Israelites did not cross the main body of the Red Sea, but only through one of the shallow lakes or marshes north of it that dry up at certain times of the year. Or perhaps they believe that it was a smaller branch of the Red Sea where the water would have been shallow enough to wade across. But the Bible says, the Bible clearly states that the Lord opened a path through the water with a strong east wind, turning the seabed into dry land. And we must also realize that the water was deep enough to cover the chariots. The God who created the earth and water performed a mighty miracle at exactly the right time to demonstrate His great power and His great love for His people. Verses 23 through 28. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so they, that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept 
them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. We see that when the water returned to normal, it was deep enough to cover the Egyptians' chariots and to drown their army. In this way, the Lord fought for Israel and defeated the Egyptians, just as he had fought and defeated Egypt's gods through the ten plagues. Verses 29 through 31. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with the wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses, His servant. You see, when God's people saw how He had destroyed the Egyptian army, they feared the Lord. This is to say that they were filled with a holy reverence and a wonderful awareness of the might of their God. Recognizing that God had saved them, the Israelites put their trust in Him. When you and I catch a glimpse of God's majesty, His power and judgment against sin should inspire our faith in God and give us a greater reverence for Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for the truths that are in Your Word. God, may we have a reverence for You. May we be in awe of who You are and how You are able to work and move and, and, and do great wonders around us. Help us to trust You and increase our faith. I pray this prayer a blessing over You. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit, then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know the best is yet to come. Amen.